Yo, what's up? Back with another Smite Meta update. From now on, I'm going to be doing these weekly. I did do a poll on my community tab. Not sure how many of you see that come up on your YouTube feed or whatever, but uh, people want it weekly as opposed to bi-weekly how I've been doing it. This does mean that the content's going to be a bit more repetitive, but I'm going to do what people want. Anyway, as per usual, we're going to start with carry, move all the way over to soul lane. So for the carry roll, we start with Soul. Soul has extremely high pressure, very high damage, and can get early kills very, very easily. This is kind of what your build's gonna be looking like. Something along the lines of this. You wanna get grip super strong because you're shredding prots for the magical damage dealers, which you are going to be seeing in Soul Lane a lot more. Breastplate of Determination is a luxury, not a luxury item. It's an item you can get if you want. It's incredibly strong. I wouldn't be surprised if the patch notes, which come out tomorrow, I'm recording this on the 11th, uh, not the 11th, whoa, I'm not in the future, on the 7th. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if they nerf it next patch. But this is kind of what the build is going to look like for you. And overall, it's just incredibly powerful. High damage. I control the lane. Prey is another pick that you can be looking at. This is kind of what you're going to be building with her. You can go Gooseberries or Bao. I think Bao is better with her. Gemma Focus or Bumba Spear is what you're going to be looking at more towards. But you can go Death's Toll for Embrace in the late game. Get your Hasten Ring. Get your Telekines. You can walk anybody down after you get Hastened Ring. This character does a ridiculous amount of damage, and she's stupid. This character's busted. Carries have so much free reign right now. It's ridiculous. There's no tanks to keep them in check, so... They can just do whatever the hell they want. Like I said last time, Oleron is essentially the Hades of dual lane. He gets pressure. That's what the character does. He gets pressure super easily. Time dilation is a very powerful ability to have. Overall, he's super strong. This is kind of be going to be what the build you're looking for is. Breastplate is not required, again, but it is an item you can build. You can finish it out with a shard, maybe another lifesteal item if you think that's necessary. You can go the hastened ring if you want. You don't have to, but... You've got options. Chernabog would be your next pick. Chernabog is super strong because he's got global rotations, high damage, good CC on his kit, very good safety, the ability to remove himself from the map. Crit is essentially unchecked because Spectral is a terrible item. Um, and you don't really have tanks right now. You've got supports who are tanks in quotes, but that's about it. And maybe a somewhat tanky jungler, but Crit is just the way to go right now. Physical Hunters aren't really building Guild Arrow that much, but it is still an option you can go. Um, Leather Cow seems to be the favorite. On Her would be the other one. This is the pen build you can go. Um, and it is a little bit better on On Her, because On Her kind of plays into the mid and early game power that he has. But I think the crit build is just overall better for the Physical Hunters. Because it's just crit is not checkable right now, because Spectral Armor is a terrible item. So, maybe if you guys are interested, I could do what I think they need to change. Um... But they are releasing a patch tomorrow, so we'll have to see what they do in that patch. So let me know about that if you're interested in seeing what I think they need to change. In the support role, Emoja. As I said before, Breastplate of Determination, overstated item. You can go any of those starters. You go Sturdy Stew. Do not buy Bow on Yamoja or Kakulid because they do not stack because neither of those characters use mana. They have a separate resource that is not mana. Therefore, they cannot stack Bow. Anyway, you kind of go Gauntlet, you go Breastplate, and then you go Fey Blessed on someone like Emoja, because Fey Blessed is super powerful. You could swap the place of the Breastplate and the Fey Blessed, but she just heals so often with her two. Super strong. If you're good with Emoja, especially, play her and just dominate your games. You will be an absolute powerhouse on this pick if you're good with her. She's got good sustain, really good rotations. She's got player-made geometry on the map that blocks off entire areas, makes them buy Phantom Shell. Good CC. Solid damage, good clear. Overall, very strong pick. Athena's fucking stupid and needs to be nerfed. Support, same build. You go Thebes, Breastplate. You can go any of these starters. Sturdy Stew. And with Athena, Dash Taunt is just powerful. You have slow on shield wall now, so it's good. You have global rotations. Giving your teammates movement speed is broken. This character is nuts. There's really not much else to say about it. She is a very cut and dry support. And if you have shitty teammates... It's very difficult for them to just not follow up on CCing more than one person to get their damage off. Ganesha, same build as the other supports. He's strong for the reasons that I said in the other meta updates before. Ohm giving protection to your allies is stupid, ridiculous, and needs to be nerfed. Just because you're standing next to somebody, you get protections. That's kind of part of the reason why warriors are bad, but there's multiple other reasons. He's got Prot Shred. He's got good CC. He's got a Silence. 
overall he's very strong kind of a sleeper pick sobek um he's got very good cc he's got very good peel and a pluck can be very disorienting for players um getting plucked by a sobek sometimes they'll juke themselves into literally just dying because they're not trying to get hit by a pluck he's got in kit anti-heal he's got good safety but in the late game you do have to be careful not to pluck yourself and die because you're plucking and they have beats but other than that though He's tanky, he's got good CC, and he's got good aggression, good ways to engage. The last pick I'm going to recommend is Horus. Both him and Sobek have the same recommended builds as the other supports. Um, Horus is an aggressive, very safe pick. He's got really good CC, he's got prot shred, he's got the safety with his heal, and he's got really good rotation ability with the semi-global, as well as just his ability to start fights by himself and just get really solid poke off. Horus is a very strong, kind of underrated pick as well. Should definitely be prowling him if you're a support. Raijin for the mid lane still. Very strong. This is kind of what you're looking at here in the mid lane. You can go breastplate. You don't have to, but it's just strong on him. And this is overall what you're looking to build. Book, Divine Ruin. You can go breastplate into Avshard, into Reaver. You can also go some other items if you're looking at maybe Tahuti if you want to. But you can go Deso as well. But this is kind of just your core build. You can go Party Punch instead of Bao, but Bao is super strong on Raijin. Fucking Grandma. Same build as last week. Prophetic Cloak, Baba Yaga is ridiculous. The character's nuts. Uh, be careful. Before the game starts, the house juice, whatever you call it, will drain to try to stack your recipe, even though the recipes won't stack before the game. And I think it's just something they overlooked. But the house will try to stack the recipe, even though they can't stack the recipe, and it will drain all your house juice. So just be conscious of that. Both Baba Yaga and Raijin do very similar things, but in different ways. Very high damage, very long channeled CC immunity, and they have very good safety. Baba Yaga's is a bit more gimmicky with her jump, but her ultimate is a very good get off me tool. And she's also super unpredictable with her one and her two. The amount of damage you're going to take if you're going to be silenced, if you're going to be prot shred, if you're going to be slowed. Sleeper pick. In a way, I guess. Not entirely, but in a way. Thoth. You're kind of be going to be doing a similar build to Raijin, but you're not really going to look at the Breastplate because you're an Artillery Mage. Because there aren't really many Warriors diving you right now, you have a lot of free reign. Um, very few Warriors can pressure you right now, and that means it's just the Assassins by themselves, and if your support sticks by you, you should be completely fine. Thoth has incredibly high damage and can absolutely shred through everybody. Explode people, good secure... Decent safety, decent pressure in mid lane. Overall, he's very solid. This might seem a bit weird, but Kakulkin actually seems pretty good. With the recent change to his two, making him slow immune through the entire thing, um, he's very irritating. He's incredibly difficult to dive, and he plays a similar artillery style to Thoth, not to the same degree, but you press three, you press one, and you walk away for a little bit. You walk back in. You're incredibly safe. Your ultimate does extremely high damage. And overall, he's just super strong. You should be building pretty much the exact same build I gave for Raijin on Kukulkan, except for you throw a poly in instead of maybe the ob shard or instead of the breastplate maybe, but breastplate's super strong on him. So you throw a polynomicon in, he feels super good. Lastly, I think Chernabog is just a very solid mid right now. You build the exact same build you would in ADC. There's no difference. He's just strong. Global rotations, high damage, decent CC, good safety, good pick. Character good Unga Bunga. That's really it. In the jungle, you still got Kamazots. Extremely high damage, very good safety, good sustain. Overall, very good pick. There's really not much where you could say about it. He explodes people in the late game. He has his Sky God button with his ultimate. He stays up in the air for so long. He does so much damage. He absolutely shreds through squishies and tanks alike, even though there aren't really that many tanks, but I'll get to that. Ratatoska is another pick that you should be going... You can go hybrid on. I think people think when they're like, oh, I'm going tank rat. I got to go the silver acorn. I got to go the one where I could spin twice. No, you don't. Go the stun acorn because having an Athena taunt size stun is ridiculous. Go Jotuns. You can go Runeforge. You can go Breastplate. You can go... Binding if you want. You don't really have to. You can go Magi's. You could just go like half and half. And this character's ridiculous. You've got Global Rotations. You've got Prot Shred. One or two. You've got huge damage. This character's nuts. 
and you should be playing him. This character is one of those characters that can completely run a game. Surter is actually a very powerful rank jungle pick. He has good tankiness. He's got very good dive. He can reach those characters. He's one of the few characters who could reach somebody like Thoth and chase him down. Overall, he's super strong. You're going to tankier build, and you could stack up your one really easily. You have high damage, really good pressure throughout the game, and once you reach 60 to 70 stacks on your one, you're chunking people. Absolutely chunking. I know some junglers won't really have them in their pick pool, but he's definitely somebody you should keep an eye on and maybe put into the pool. He's pretty sleeper and very good. Another really solid pick, Lancelot. Very high damage, really good safety with the horse, especially in the comps that don't have stuns. There's very little that can get that can get you off of it. He has really good chase. Overall, super strong pick. There's really not much more I could say about it. He could do a lot. And he can get a lot of stuff done. Last thing we're going to talk about Humbats. You pretty much can go the same build I put up for Lance. He is high damage, good clear, very good CC. His ultimate in the late game, in the mid game, in the early game. Once you hit five, you can gank whoever you want, get their beads, come back in a little bit, gank them again, and almost guarantee a kill. He's a super strong pick. And you can just farm people on cooldown if they don't have beads. Moving over to Solo. Yeah, Opwash. I would argue that he is probably one of, if not the best, ranked solo laner right now. This character can do a ridiculous amount of things. He does absurd damage. He heals so much from eating up corpses. He is ridiculous. He has good lane clear. He has good 2v1 potential. Very good safety. Very good pressure in the late game team fights. Overall, he does what a warrior would want to do. But even better, because he can actually kill people. I don't know. It just kind of speaks to a core problem with Smite right now. But Opwash is a super strong pick, and you should be abusing the hell out of him. Learn him and abuse the hell out of him in solo lane. He absolutely frags. Raijin again. Same exact build. You can go a binding, but it's probably better in something like rank to just go divine. This build is just kind of the build for the mages. You can go Sack Shroud, or you can go Blood Soaked. I like Sack Shroud on Raijin. On Opwash, I like blood blood soaked. Um, on somebody like Lefay, you go the exact same build. I like Sack Shroud on her, but you can also go blood soaked. She builds the exact same thing and does very similar things. All of them have CC survivability, very high damage, and CC immunity. Raijin and Lefay both have long channeled CC immune ultimates. Opwash doesn't have CC immunity, but Opwash has absurd damage to make up for it more than the other ones. And he has very high healing outside of combat. Poseidon, you have the exact same build. High damage, Kraken is Kraken. Very good farming capability. His mobility is very high. He's got good safety in terms of clear. He's got decent 2v1 potential. He's got good solo potential. Right now in ranked, there's very little reason to play a warrior because they just don't do shit. There's only one of them that really does anything in ranked. Maybe two of them. The only one that does anything is Wukong. Because you build mostly damage on him anyway. You build him half and half. Yeah, but the only warrior worth playing is Wukong or maybe Hercules. But you're building mostly damage anyway. And you can't even go like double defense anymore. You have to go something like a Brawlers because of how much lifesteal is in the in the kits. Or in the in the builds now for the solo lane mages. Wukong's really the only one who can keep up with their damage. Hercules can survive it, but Hercules isn't as good late game. Overall right now, solo lane's not really in the most solo lane-esque state i'm fine with unique picks and i'm cool with the mages honestly i like mages and unique picks being allowed in solo lane and being viable but not when warriors are it's not when it's because warriors are so doo-doo dog ass that that's the reason they're being picked mages do their job but better why would i dive their back line when their support gives them protections when i could just stand next to my support do the same thing that they're doing and be safe about it you know it's kind of what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching. As I said before, I'm going to be doing these weekly now. I'm also going to get back to doing the shorts versions of it because I feel like that's still just another opportunity that I should keep doing. Regardless, thanks for watching. Peace.